Good morning and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. We're glad that you're here today. Please take just a moment during worship. You'll find the brown welcome pad in the pew in front of you, in the pew rack. And if you just let us know you're here for worship today, we appreciate that. If you have a prayer concern, you may write that person's name or that event on the back side of that slip. Our ushers will be collecting those during our first hymn. At this time, please rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. It's found in the front of your red hymnal. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please notice that we'll sing verses 1 and 7, and then also the last stanza of our hymn this morning, number 419, for all the faithful women. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ and you make yourself our guest amidst all the cares of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence that we may treasure your word above all else through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may remain standing, please, for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus uses his visit to two sisters as an occasion to remind disciples that an important aspect of obedience is single-minded devotion to Jesus and his word. The reading from St. Luke. Now, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha came, welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated and the kids to come forward this morning for the children's message. Good morning, kids. Come on up, boys, girls. I think it's almost all boys, not all boys this morning. Come on up. Good morning. All right. Boy, everybody is so quiet. It's still 8.30 in the morning, isn't it? All right. Okay, I'm going to give you a little booklet here, but don't open it up yet, okay? Keep it closed. All right. I'll give one to you too, Mrs. Sinius. There you go, Brett. Here you go, boys. Okay, keep the book closed, though, for now, all right? Now, today we hear a story of... Two sisters, one sister is named Mary, and the other sister is named Martha. Now, I want to ask you guys, at home, <laughs> we got the important stuff, now we're on our way, <laughs> rejoicing. Do you have things that you have to do at home, chores, right? Probably make your bed, raise your hand if, if making, making your bed is one of your chores, okay? Yeah, everybody put up their hand. <laughs> How about picking up and putting away your toys? Is that one of your chores? Yes. yes, of course. Otherwise, they'd be all over the house, right? How about, uh, you know, when you get a little bit older, maybe you have to take out the trash, right? Ever have to do that? Are you mowing the lawn yet? No? Uh, Brock does that. It's nice to have an old uh, big brother or little brother? I forget. Big brother. Just by a little bit, though, huh? Yeah. Well, today there's a story of two sisters. The one sister, her name is Mary. The other sister is Martha. And Jesus came to visit them. He was staying with them at their home. And Mary, she uh, said hello to Jesus, and then she sat down with him, and, and uh, he was telling her something. They were talking about something. I'm not exactly sure what. But then Martha, she said, she said, you know, Jesus, I have the dishes to do. I have the laundry to wash. I have the bills to pay. And she had like, she had like 14 things uh, on her to-do list, on her chores, right? Maybe she had to make the beds and, right, all of these things. So she was so, she was so overwhelmed by all the stuff that she had to do. She didn't know where to start. You know what she said to Jesus? Make my sister help me. Make my sister help me. And Jesus said to her, you know, those things can wait, okay? Wouldn't that be nice if your mom said, oh, you don't have to worry about making your bed right now and we'll pick up your toys later, huh? Right? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Well, Jesus said to Martha, you know, all of these chores, the dishes, the laundry, paying the bills, mowing the lawn, right? They can all wait because I'm not going to be with you forever, Jesus said. He was going to go on to the next town, okay? He was going to keep traveling. 
So I'm not going to be in your house forever, so why don't we talk, all right? What do you think they talked about? Any idea? The Bi Bible doesn't tell us. Bible doesn't tell us. But maybe they were remembering when Jesus was born, okay? So that's what this little booklet is about. It was the night of Jesus' birth, all right? And who knows, maybe that's what they were talking about that day. Would you fold your hands, please? And we'll say a prayer, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for coming to us, for visiting us in each of our homes. Thank you for blessing us. Help us, O oh Lord, always to listen to your Son and help us to have ears to hear what he would say to us. We pray all these things in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. You can be seated. Well, dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wouldn't that be something, to have Jesus visit you in your home? I suppose if, uh, uh, if Jesus came to visit me, I, <laughs> I can't say, that my, I can't say that, that, that my statement to Jesus would be any different from Martha's, because you know it really wasn't a question that she asked him, was it? Huh? Do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work? Tell her then, tell her then to help me. How is it that Mary is able to meet Jesus, perhaps for the first time, and recognize that here was someone who would speak a word of grace and mercy, who would reveal God's word to her, that she would stop and listen and be still. You know, a lot really hasn't changed in 2,000 years of time. The hecticness of life, it overwhelms us. Chores pile on. There are all sorts of things that we feel we need to do. But as Jesus says to Martha, so he says also to you and me today, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. And isn't that the truth? There is need of only one thing, and that is to know that God has called you by name, that God forgives you your sins, that the Lord is with you always, even until the very end of the age. You know, that is what that poem Footprints is about, right? The one where, looking back upon life, the author sees only one set of footprints during the most difficult times of his life and asks, Lord, I thought you promised to be with me. And that's where the Lord replies, you know it, huh? My child, that was when I carried you. You see, these are the things that if we can only stop and be still and set aside for only a time, all of those other distractions and obligations and duties and worries of our lives if we can stop for just a little while and hear God's promise, then we'll be encouraged and strengthened. We will know that we are not alone, that we are not forsaken or abandoned, even in the most difficult times of our lives. Because that, dear friends, is when we will need to remember that God has not forsaken us. Not long after this episode here in the Gospel, John comes excuse me, Jesus comes to Mary and Martha again. He comes to them because their brother has died. Lazarus has gone down to the dead. And I believe it's Martha who says to him again, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And yet, now, even so, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Martha must have learned something on that day when Jesus first visited her because she knew enough that God would give him whatever he asked. That's the good news to us today, brothers and sisters in Christ, that the Lord comes to us and that if we will only stop and be still for just a little bit, then we will not be overwhelmed by the cares and worries of this life and we will be encouraged and in the most difficult hours of our lives, we'll be able to remember that the Lord is with us 
and that he has promised to bless us always. Peace be with you, sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Let's rise and join our voices in singing hymn number 685. The confession of our faith is found at the back of your hymnal with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, let us confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. <clears throat> Together with the whole church, let us pray for the world and all in need. O Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise that you have promised to be with us always and that nothing, neither life nor death nor powers nor anything that might be would separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord God, give us ears that we might always be quick to listen. Help us to lay aside and give over to your care the worries and concerns of all of our lives, that we might not be overwhelmed, that we might remember that you are with us always. Lord, in your mercy, especially we give in to your loving care all those who are close to us in our hearts, our friends and family and neighbors, those who need your gentle touch and your healing hand. 
especially pour out your spirit upon Jim, Karen, Merrill, Sue, and Joellen. We lift up to your care Diane, Robin, Ashley, and Marlis. We ask that you watch over Rick, Walker, Alex, Cade, Mel, and that you stay close to the side of little Xander. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks and praise, dear Heavenly Father, for the promise of life everlasting. And we glorify your name, that our friends and family have now entered into all of their inheritance. Bless all the family of Alice Payton, especially comfort her son Tony. Be with all the family of Pat Winter, especially Gilbert and Pat's son. Bless all the family of Curtis Ross, and watch over Joyce Gronemeyer that they might know that their loved ones are in your everlasting care. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in this place. We pray for peace in our time and that you would make us peacemakers, O oh Lord, by our words, by our deeds, by our actions. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you know the plans that you have for us. Watch over all the congregation of St. John's and bless us now in our special meeting today that in the consideration of hiring Renee Behrens, we might look forward to what you have in store for us. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands then, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us rise and share Christ's peace with one, an one another. With thanks and praise, let us offer our gifts to the Lord.
Dear friends, this morning I'm going to ask um, Ms. Karen to help me with communion today as I'm a little bit under the weather and don't want to share any germs with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O Lord, that you have blessed us with all creation. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. And we ask that you would now nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set, all is prepared, and our Lord says, come and dine. Please be seated, coming forward at the direction of your ushers.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 536, and of course, we don't invite you to leave immediately uh, because we'll be proceeding to the special meeting. Our sending hymn, number 536. Seated for our announcements. If you're visiting this morning, welcome. Please grab one of the gift bags at the doors on your way home today. Of course, there's going to be a special congregational meeting in just a little bit for the question of hiring Ms. Renee Behrens as pastor in training. And so if you want to get a cup of coffee or something, uh, go ahead and feel free to do that. And then we'll start the meeting sometime in the neighborhood Oh, a little after 9.15. Don't forget, the newsletter deadline is this Monday. It always comes and goes. And it's time again to do the noisy offering. It's in support, of course, of the Sioux City Gospel Mission. And so we very much appreciate uh, all your pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters. It's that time of year when kids go back to school. And so it's time to get ready for Lutheran World Relief's school kits. You'll find a bin out there in the narthex and uh, some information on page eight in your bulletin. And with that, I invite you to please stand for the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to